Okay. So our speaker tonight is Deb. Um, so as some of you know, she did speak on Friday. She's a polio survivor. Um, she had polio at age five and she is currently a Rotarian and she coordinates the Hanover Post Polio Support Group, which has about 25 support members. And she's also the cent uh, central coordinator for the PA Polio Survivors Network. So they provide information for polio survivors, their families and caregivers, and send out over 2,000 newsletters all over the U.S. and are connected with survivors all over the world. So I will go ahead and turn it over here to Deb if she wants to give a little introduction before we get started on the video here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, you said it all. <laughs> um, well, we are... Um, we are, are pleased to, to be a part of your group tonight. And uh, we do um, have a lot of vaccine information that you will see in the video. So I'm gonna let you see the video and then we will have question and answer afterwards. Great, okay, give me a second. I'm gonna try and pull up the video here and hopefully we will not have any issues with the audio. Okay. Give me one second. <laughs> Are you guys able to hear the audio? No. Okay, yeah. give me one second. Let me just double check. All right, let's try this one more time. At home, right here, to our own local communities. The number of lives that are saved every year by vaccines is enormous. Two to three million deaths can be prevented. COVID-19 has created challenges all over the United States and abroad, but even so, the work has not stopped. Thanks to the PLUS and Polio Plus and the infrastructure that is now in place, there was only a temporary pause in the polio eradication campaigns. Africa was declared wild polio free. The elimination of the wild polio virus is something we can all celebrate. It's positive in a world of quarantine and uncertainty, but we still have work to do. This is the reality we face in our global world. These diseases are only a plane ride away. Let's bring it home. This isn't a problem that exists on the other side of the world. Sadly, vaccination rates are down in the United States. The American Academy of Pediatrics is actively engaged in reminding parents that even in the midst of a pandemic, pediatric vaccinations are a necessity and can be done safely. It's been more than five years since our PA Polio Network team began our journey bringing forth information about managing the lifelong disabling effects of this terrible disease. We are an all volunteer team of nine, four of whom are polio survivors spread throughout Pennsylvania. We share a passionate connection with Rotary International to stop polio in its tracks. Rotary and their partners are tireless in their efforts to focus on disease prevention by vaccinating every child. As time has gone by, we've discovered that although well known for wanting to eradicate a disease that we understand all too well, Rotary is famous for something much bigger than just polio. One of their six key areas of focus is disease prevention and treatment. As a result, the Rotary Foundation has without question placed their efforts into the plus of the term polio plus. This might sound odd coming from us, but as, as a result of working with them, we've discovered that we're bigger than polio too. Yes, we are experiencing the lifelong effects of the polio virus, but of greatest importance, we are survivors of a vaccine preventable disease. 
I'm Jim. I'm a polio survivor. I'm Deb. I'm a polio survivor. I'm Joe. I am a survivor. I'm Carol. I am a polio survivor. Last January, when the World Health Organization announced that lack of vaccination was one of the top 10 global health threats, we got mad. We talked and we agreed it was time to act. We approached Rotary International and the Rotary District Governors in Pennsylvania with the idea of launching a statewide vaccine information card project. We were thrilled when Rotary International gave us the branding approval that would support our effort to go forward with an idea that would bring credible vaccine information to parents. I am personally grateful to the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Dr. Paul Offit, for explaining it so beautifully. He said, Carol, you are partnering one of the most credible organizations in the world with survivors of a vaccine preventable disease. You are bringing a new twist to an old message. Vaccines work. We can easily connect the fear of contracting polio to the fear we are all experiencing today with COVID-19. The worries we're experiencing for our family and friends are fears that we all share every day as we wait and pray for a vaccine. The memories emerging of this fear and isolation is troubling at best to the permanently disabled polio survivors all over the United States and abroad. We are looking forward to this crisis lifting so we can renew our personal commitment to encourage parents to vaccinate their children. What is this idea? It's a card that contains a simple message. No child should suffer from a vaccine preventable disease. The pain and disability can last a lifetime. Please vaccinate your children. We know that no parent wants to harm their child. We also understand how easy it is to end up with significant misinformation from the internet and yes, from Facebook. We've also learned that many parents in the US are vaccine hesitant because they've never actually seen firsthand the effects of these terrible diseases. These two things added together are a fearful combination. There is a website link and a scan code on the front of the card that will take parents directly to the Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, where there is a library of the most up-to-date vaccination information. That being said, we understand that not all new parents are instantly online. On the back are easily accessed phone numbers and links to sources for information all of which can help parents make informed decisions about vaccines. Over the next year, we are optimistic that we'll be able to roll out this card to every new parent in our state. In addition, with the positive response we've had from pediatricians, we would also like to be able to raise the funds to be able to offer this simple resource for credible vaccine information to them as well. How are we gonna do this? That's the very best part. We are accepting donations to print this card only from Rotary Clubs, individuals, and our nonprofit partners. Should a parent who doesn't believe in vaccines come to us with doubts as to who has provided this information and they want to accuse us of being pharmaceutical company backed, we will honestly be able to say, no, we're not. Our Pennsylvania Immunization Coalition has 17 local coalitions scattered throughout our state. Each has the ability to connect with their local hospitals and physicians about this project to determine what their needs are in their local communities. We are rolling out this project to the Rotary Clubs all over Pennsylvania, making this a statewide Rotary and Immunization Coalition project. Unbeknownst to us, while we were developing this idea, Senator Judy Schwank from Reading and Representative Dan Frankel from Pittsburgh were proposing legislation 
that will begin the journey to take our state in the right direction regarding vaccine exemptions. In May of last year, we were asked to attend Senator Judy Schwank's press conference announcing her legislation to reduce vaccine exemptions. Although unprepared, I was asked to speak about our developing project. We've been featured in the Delaware, Chester, and York County Medical Society magazines and the Bucks and Montgomery County Physicians Magazine as well. When we saw the photos they chose from our website, we guessed that someone on the editorial staff must be a Rotarian, and that was fun to see. Last June, while in Harrisburg, attending the PA State Immunization Conference, we visited nine legislators and met the Secretary of the Department of Health regarding our support for changes to the vaccine exemptions in Pennsylvania, and we also presented this vaccine project idea. We had positive feedback from everyone we met regarding our project, having a credible response to the vaccine hesitancy that so many parents in our state now have. Sadly, this year's conference has been canceled, but we will go back to the Capitol as soon as we are able. In August, we were asked, along with Patrick Rooney, District Governor of 7390, to speak about Rotary's focus on disease prevention and immunization and our vaccine information card project at a press conference hosted by Secretary of Pennsylvania Department of Health, Dr. Rachel Levine. We were humbled when she asked us to participate to highlight and thank the PA Polio Survivors Network and Rotary International for the work that they are doing to highlight the importance of vaccinations. When her press secretary asked me to speak in our behalf, he told me we were enthusiastic towards the subject of vaccines. We thought long and hard about what he said, wishing we'd had the polio vaccine is stating the obvious. Yes, childhood vaccinations are personal, not just for the four permanently disabled survivors actively engaged on our team, but for the thousands we are now connected with all over the United States. What is our goal? It is our goal to raise the funds to print 150,000 cards. This will cover 119,000 expected births and the pediatrician request. This will bring attention to Rotary International's focus on disease prevention and immunization to everyone who receives these cards. We are confident that by working together, we can reach every new parent in our state with this simple but effective, credible vaccine resource. It's about the truth. We don't want any child to suffer the pain and disability from a vaccine preventable disease. We are survivors who want to help parents understand the pain and disability can, and without question, last a lifetime. Join us as we work together to become part of the solution. We discovered in June that when it comes to building bridges with parents in our own communities regarding vaccines, Rotary International agrees. Hey, look, gravity still works. No one questions the existence and persistence of gravity because we see it every day. It's the reason I didn't float away just now. And what goes up must come down. People question vaccines because they can't witness their efficacy in the same way. But if you look at the data, you'll see that vaccines work. As the conversation around vaccines becomes more hostile, we're seeing an increase in outbreaks of preventable diseases. It's not just measles, it's rotavirus, tetanus, even polio. But the science on vaccinations is settled. There's no dispute. To put it another way, vaccines protect me from you. If you don't get vaccinated, a germ can infect you and then spread to me. And it might be a mutated form that's harder for my immune system to fight. I don't want to fight with your germs. 
And no one wants children who are too young to be immunized to be exposed either. So every reputable health agency and organization in the world recommends vaccines. CDC, World Health Organization, the National Center for Disease Control India. I could go on, but the list is incredibly long. And since 1988, when the Global Polio Eradication Initiative was formed, Rotary and its partners have been working to grow acceptance of the polio vaccine. Opposition in some countries was rooted in fear and misunderstanding. But through building goodwill and trust, the GPEI began to implement strategies to increase vaccine acceptance. And since the partnership formed, we've seen a worldwide reduction in polio cases of 99.9%. That's about as concrete as evidence gets for preventative medicine. But there's still work to be done. Just like the GPEI, we're asking you to build bridges with parents in your communities. Well, I love data, and I could talk about it all day. We've learned that bombarding hesitant parents with studies and numbers has limited success and can sometimes even backfire. We need to find the right forms of persuasion so that we can help people make better choices and protect me from you. Our work was included in the September issue of Rotary Magazine. We are all hopeful the credible and accurate information about vaccines will prevail. These vaccine information cards can help us build bridges with the parents in our communities. To quote Dr. Paul Offit, we are partnering one of the most credible organizations in the world with survivors of a vaccine preventable disease to bring a new twist to an old message, vaccines work. Through the generosity of Rotary Clubs and individuals, we are well on our way to funding our goal. The Vaccine Education Center at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia has come on board as the direct link to the most up-to-date vaccine information. Our Pennsylvania Immunization Coalitions will be the distribution arm through PAIC projects. This is a very inexpensive and long-reaching opportunity for Rotary Clubs and individuals. A donation of $100 will give these cards to 1,300 families in your community. We are happy to respond to the demand for a card design that allows immunization coalitions, hospitals, pediatricians, and rotary clubs to put their own logo on the front of the card. Foreign languages. We will soon have them available in Spanish, French, Hindi, Mandarin Chinese, Japanese, and Russian. We hope you'll join us. We know that by working together, supporting Rotary's focus on disease prevention and treatment, we can be a part of the solution. All right. Deb, I'll let you jump in if you have any uh, closing remarks after the video that you'd like to add. Uh, well, uh, we sure would enjoy if you all would be, uh, you know, a part of our part of our network and, and uh, uh, give us a donation of um, the $100 um, to um, to purchase the cards. Um, uh, and the Rotary magazine, if uh, I have it, one here. Uh, that we showed a little while ago that, um, and it's on page 24. If you have your Rotary uh, magazine um, handy, you can check out the, what they had to say about our network. And this is one of our cards. Um, and down here in the corner is the uh, scan code that we talked about. If, you can, if I can get that on there right, right mm -hmm. way, that goes into the hospital. And, um, we just want to thank you for having us this evening, and uh, um, we are just we want to our, what we want to do as polio survivors is we want to be a part of the solution, and that's why we're working so hard to get information so folks can get their children vaccinated. Great. Do you have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? 
have you found i mean i know that there's been like a big anti-vax push especially against crunchy mamas or whatever you will has that extended to polio as well i know it's been more against the typical childhood diseases well they they kind of put us all in the same boat i think okay um, so you know yeah and and look what we've done in africa you know we uh with the, with the rotary um you know vaccinating children that it's the wild polio is eradicated in um in africa so you know, that should be a sign, you know, and, and a lot yeah. of people are traveling today and, you know, that's how this gets sent around, you know. Like so. you said, I mean, we're such a small world now. I mean, COVID mm -hmm. and everything proved that people don't realize right. like the whole world is in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Deb? Okay, well, um, thank you, Deb, for joining us and sharing the video. It's great information and certainly great timing around our pints for Polio Week and World Polio Day. Um, for those of you, we will make sure we share that video on our website and also uh, share the website for donations as well if you're interested in making a personal donation. And, um, you know, this is, uh, I think the best thing that you can say out there, which really hits home, is we're just a plane ride away. It's, it's really scary when you start to think about how easily this could, you know, go out of control and start to yeah. spread. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for all the work that you guys are doing. And we certainly uh, enjoy having you here and, and help being a part of helping to continue to get the message out there to try and curb this. Right. Thank you. It was thank good you. having seeing you all again. I remember good. we were there in person last year. I know. A little bit different this year, but yeah. still good to have you. Yeah. Thank you.